Hello everyone, I'm Yusra. And I'm Nardos, and welcome to week three of Starting From Scratch. We are so excited to have you back. So we're actually very excited. And before we get started, we actually have some studio common questions. So anytime you have a question about something you don't understand, feel free to put it in the studio comments. Um, so why don't we have Nardos share her screen? to show. Okay. Yeah. So our question was from scratch, Aisha, and she was wondering whether or why we don't use special characters or spaces in our file names. Right. So file naming is super important. And so to answer this, we actually just went to Google um, and we found that Stanford libraries, which if you haven't heard of it before, Stanford's a school in California. And we found that they have a resource for best practices for file naming. So there are three things you should keep in mind. The first thing is sometimes your computer might not recognize really long names, kind of like how sometimes we don't even recognize really long names. So always make sure your names are short. The second thing is special characters. Your computer might not recognize special characters and sometimes you'll get a message that says, error, this isn't recognized with a special character. And then the third thing is do not use spaces. Right, so why don't we take a quick little um, file naming quiz. So you all can put your responses for which number you think has the correct file naming based on last week's lesson. This is gonna be really fun. So in the chat, just put either one, two, three, four or five. And here's a tip, read carefully and recall what we learned. So we'll give you guys a couple seconds. I see someone said five. Okay, so let's reveal the answer. So if you also thought five, you're right. So. Why don't we break down um, each answer choice and tell you guys why it's wrong? Yeah, so this first one, Morgan's birthday party made with costumes. Woo, that was long. And it also uses an apostrophe, which is a special character, and it does not follow the, re the requested protocol. Let's look on the bright side though, right? So it, it does a couple things right. It uses upper camel case, which is capitalizing the first letter of each word. And it uses kebab case, which is using dashes. And the second one has a space. And like we learned, our computer may not recognize the space. And it also does not follow the requested protocol. And then option three technically is right. But um, it doesn't follow the requested protocol. It's so important to name your files by how we want it, just so that you can be featured in, during our studio time. But it does use upper camel case and snake case, which is using underscores. And next up, we have this num number four, which is untitled. And this is the default name that Scratch gives our projects. So it doesn't really tell us what our project is about. And number five, the winner. Look how beautiful that file naming is. We see that it uses upper camel case. It's easy to read. It follows the requested protocol and it's not too long. Yeah, so like um, Yuster has been saying that your computer is gonna give you an error if you don't follow the, these protocols. And if for the starting from scratch class, you are uploading your projects to the studio, then we will only spotlight projects that are following this naming protocol. So please continue using the correct protocols because we really want everyone to be featured during studio time. Yeah, so and thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, thank you to Scratch, Aisha, and Code Queen 3919 And remember to keep writing us in the studio comments um, once this week's link is put in the chat. 
And this is just a reminder that we want to create a really safe learning environment. So just make sure you are respectful and appropriate in the chat. And failure to do so, your comment will get banned, unfortunately. And you will also get banned from the live stream. And we don't want that happening because we're so excited to teach everyone here about uh, coding. And with that, namaste, everyone. Please make sure to subscribe using the red button below and click on the bell to get notifications for when each live goes live. So this is week three of the Starting From Scratch series, and we're super excited to work with everyone here. So today we're gonna continue with introductions, then we're gonna spotlight some of your projects from week two. Then we'll do an awesome sounds project. Um, and lastly, we'll finish off with game time. So you will learn how to use sounds and broadcasting. So these are the mentors of the class. You've met some of them. And over the next couple of weeks, you're gonna meet others. And then make sure to take a picture of this if you haven't already and follow everyone on Scratch, all these mentors, because they are awesome. <laughs> and again, my name is Nardos. I'm in 11th grade and I live in Virginia, USA. What a coincidence, because I also live in Virginia, USA, and I'm Yusra, I'm a guest mentor, and I'm in 12th grade. So last week, we learned about storytelling from Nora and Amanda. Um, and if you missed that video, the video is under the Code Tigers YouTube channel, and you can watch it after this live stream. And you all made some awesome projects. And an excellent project follows the file name protocol. It has instructions and notes and credits, and it's personalized. Yeah, so I'm going to reshare my screen so that we can look at some of the projects. And so while Nardos is doing that, anytime you have trouble while coding, we have class resources. And you can find that either in the chat towards the end of this live stream, or you can find it in the description box. It's okay to get mixed up sometimes when it comes to coding. I know I have before, so don't worry if you ever have to use the class resources, they are there to help you. Definitely. So we are spotlighting Going to Concert by Mistress Brain. Um, and we actually cannot see your screen. Oh, okay. Um, Let me do that again, sorry. That's okay. But remember that in order to be featured, make sure to follow the requested protocol because we really want everyone to be featured and have the chance to be recognized because everyone does great work. And now we can see the screen, so why don't we get into it? Perfect, so like I said, this is going to concert by Mistress Brain. Interesting, there's a use of speech bubbles. And look, now we have a new backdrop. Ooh, there's an interesting change in outfit. Excellent job to this project. They followed all requested protocol. Um, so excellent job. Now let's okay, see I'm gonna, the next one. Yep, I'm gonna reshare the next one as well. Um, just give me a second so that I can find it. So Mistress Brain followed the requested protocol through the way they named their title, which followed upper camel case. And they also used instructions and notes and credits. And they did what was expected of them. So excellent job. Now let's look at uh, the next one. Yeah, thank you, Yusra. So this is going to be Going to Party by Dia Elizabeth. I see that there's a say bubble. There's a change in background. Ooh. Ooh, this is very interesting. There's also a change in hairstyle. I can tell that this person definitely 
um, was very detailed because there's different types of speech um, involved in their project. There's thought bubbles and there's speech bubbles. So excellent job. Now we're gonna look at today's um, project that we're gonna be making. So I'm gonna share a sample. Okay, can you see the screen? Yes, we can. Perfect. So we're gonna press the green flag to start. Interesting. Ready, ready. <gasps> what happened to Bernie? My goodness, what a story. It was a short story, but there was definitely some plot in there. Yeah, and we're gonna learn how to make the story. So I'm gonna share the presentation so that we can get started. So once again, excellent job to Mistress Brain and Dia. So we're gonna continue our um, focus on Scratch by looking at sounds and how they make our stories a lot more interesting. So the file naming protocol that we're gonna follow today is play sound followed by your first name. And so this example in red right here is what you should follow. Our story is called the frog, the fish, and the chick. It begins with the frog hanging out, and then the frog realizing he's hungry, and then the frog eats the fish. Right, so how did they make that? We're gonna learn. But first, we're gonna plan out our plot, and then we're gonna start our coding. But planning takes so long. Why do we have to do it? It's so important because Going through planning allows our story to be much clearer and we become better programmers. Hmm, how is the story gonna go? Let's break down the plot. So the first thing, in the beginning, the frog is hanging out with a simple backdrop. And then in the middle, the frog is hungry. And he's gonna eat the fish. That's when the chick who is a friend of both the frog and the fish asks, where's Bernie? So we know that this is a three character story. We have the frog, the fish, and the chick. So let's get started. I'm gonna open up Scratch so you all can go to scratch.com, scratch.edu as well, and we can get started. And while that is loading up, remember to follow um, the file name protocol this time so that you can be featured. And the link is in the chat, so scratch.mit.edu. So are you able to see the screen? Uh, not quite. Okay, let me try again. Sorry for all the technical um, difficulties, everyone. Okay, how about now? Uh, yes, we are able to see the screen. Okay, so I'm going to start out by naming the project, just like we learned with the protocol from today. So I'm going to say play sounds mentor. But you all would replace mentor with your first name. So last time I checked, there are three characters, the frog, the fish, and the chick, and we have a cat. So we're gonna delete this cat and get rid of it. Okay, then I'm gonna hover my mass, mouse over this choose a sprite button. Then I'm gonna search for our frog. So let's look for the frog and use the search bar because it's much quicker. Thank you, Yustra. No problem. So now the frog sprite shows up on our stage. So since the frog is hanging out, let's click on the backdrops to pick one. 
So I'm going to click on the stage and then navigate towards the backdrops tab. So, so I'm going to search for a backdrop. And I'll choose the blue sky for now. Wait, I have a brilliant idea. Let's make this screen a title page that looks like a movie. That's great. So I'm going to use this text block and I'll type out the title of our story, which is the frog fish and a chick. Exactly. So we can use the text feature to write out the story name on the backdrop, just like Nardos did. Um, and after you type it out, you can go under the color selector. Right, and I'm gonna make this black. Just so, we just can so that it. it's readable. Then I'm gonna use the sides of the box to make it bigger so that it is more readable. There we go, our title is done. What a great title. So now I'm gonna name the costume just so that I know what this backdrop is for. So I'm gonna name it title. Then we can click on our code tab to continue. But wait, before we can even start coding, um, we can see in this top right corner, I can zoom in, that um, we're sele we selected the backdrop right now, but we wanna be able to code our frog. So to do this, we're gonna select the frog sprite down here. So now we're on the code tab. So now you'll see a faded image of the frog in the top right corner. So we are good to go. Right, and just like we learned, we're gonna start our code with an events block and we're gonna use the when green flag is clicked. So we are showing um, so we're showing the frog because we want him on this page. So then we can add the show block, which is under the looks tab. But why and do we need it? Well, there's there's a difference between a show block and a hide block. So a show makes a sprite that what was once hidden visible. And a hide block makes something that was once visible hidden. Okay, so I think now we can switch the backdrop to the title so that we can make sure that our story starts exactly on the screen that we want it to. So I'm gonna drag the switch backdrop to block and make sure it's selected to title and add it to our code. So why don't we test the code to see how it works? Let's see. Hmm. Doesn't look like everything's all right. We probably don't want the frog's tongue showing. Let's change that. Okay, so under the costumes tab, we can get rid of the tongue. So before I make any changes, I wanna make sure that I duplicate this one. So I'm gonna right click and click duplicate. Now I have two of the frog costumes. So I know from last week's stream that we can select the tongue using the selector tool, then click on the delete button. Yeah, now it's gone. Then I want to name both my costumes. So I'll name this first one, Frog With. And then I'll name the second one, Frog Without. Great. So let's click on the code tab and switch the costume. Use the switch costume block. And with the drop down menu, choose frog without. Looks like it's already selected. So let's click on the green flag in order to test our code. Perfect, it works. So now the tongue is back um, into the frog's mouth. 
So testing is a really important coding skill. Definitely, Nardos. And it helps us avoid a bunch of bugs in our program. So something that is really, really cool is that we can have the frog make a sound. So click on the sounds tab. Oh, there's already a sound here. Why don't we hear it? Boring. That was so boring. Why don't we make a sound that actually sounds like a frog? Yeah, so I'm going to delete this sound. And then this button right here that says choose a sound um, shows us that we can upload a sound or we can even record one. So I'm going to click on the record button. Then this so pop up will show up on your screen. And it also looks like the computer. Here's, here's you, Nardos. So let's make a sound like a frog, which is ribbit, ribbit. <laughs> OK, I'm going to try my best. So here we go. Ribbit, ribbit. <laughs> That's a great impression. Then we can use the red um, lines on the side so that we can cut out this flat sound. And then we can play to make sure that we're not cutting out the parts that we want to keep. Ribbit, ribbit. I think that it sounds great. Click save and then we can name it. We can okay. write frog so it's easy to identify. There we go. So now let's switch back to the code tab. And one of the blocks that allows us to play sound is the play sound until done block. So I can it's add that to my code. Right. right. So it's important to remember that the music will have to stop before the code after it can continue running. So let's hear it and see what it sounds like. Ribbit, ribbit. Um, maybe we can go faster. You're right, let's try that. So under the sounds tab again, I can see that there are multiple options to edit the sound. So we wanna go faster. So this first button right here will allow us to do that. Ribbit, ribbit. Do you like I, that better, Mr. I like that way better. That was much better. It sounded more like a frog. Um, Perfect, so let's test out the code and see if that works fine. Ribbit, ribbit. That sounds perfect. So now we are done with the title page. Our story plot tells us that the frog is going to hang out on a backdrop. Next, let's get the backdrop. So under the stage again, I'm gonna go back to where it says backdrops. And in order to make our new slide, I'm just going to duplicate the title one that we have here. And since this isn't a title page, I'm going to delete the text. Well, Nardis is going to delete the text, right? Yeah. <laughs> and change the color of the page. Um, let me pick the fill button. And maybe we can try a purple screen. Oops, that looks more like blue. <laughs> Colors. Okay, perfect. So now we can name the costume so that we know what it's for. I'm gonna say that it's purple, just so I can remember. Great, so we're done with the beginning of the story. Let's switch to the code tab. But wait, just like we talked about, before we go on, we see that we still selected the backdrop. So I'm going to click on this frog costume, this frog sprite, and I can see that we're back to our frog's code. That's a good point. It's great that you all are making sure that code goes on the right workspace. How about you share in the chat how you keep track of where your code is? So we'll give you a couple seconds to do that.
And while people are doing that, I'm going to add the save block so that our frog can say that he is hungry. Or I'll actually use the think block. So I'm dragging that to my code. And writing out, I'm hungry. So we're not necessarily changing it, but we're actually adding to it. So let's test the code. Ribbit, ribbit. Oops, looks like there's a problem. Um, I see that the frog thinks that he's hungry on the title page. So I think we forgot the switch backdrop block. Let's place it before the frog thinks and select purple. Yep, and it looks like it's already selected to purple. So let's, let's see if that works. Ribbit, ribbit. Awesome. This is almost good um, because the frog thinks that the it's on the thinks on the correct page, but I can barely see the title page. So what can we really do about that? So our code looks correct, but the computer must be reading and displaying it so fast that our eyes can't see it. So the wait block allows us to add a pause. So why don't we try that? So under control, I'm going to add the wait block before we switch backdrops. It's good, but still a bit fast. So why don't so, we try seeing it again? OK, let's look at it and see. Ribbit, ribbit. Yeah, so in coding, you have lots of choices. In this scenario, you can choose to add another wait block, or you can change the time on the wait block that already exists. Or you might even decide that you're happy with the code. So in coding, you have lots of choices. Yeah, so I'm going to change the wait block to say 1.5, because you can actually have segments of um, seconds into your wait block. So let's try it again. Ribbit, ribbit. Perfect. Just so you all remember, everyone makes mistakes in coding, and that is OK. So just test your code and debug until you solve the problem. Exactly. And personalizing your program is about how you want it to run and how you see fit to your story. So enjoy your choice. There is no right or wrong answer. So our next step is going to be to add our fish because our frog is going to want to eat our fish. And that is what we talked about in our plot. So I'm going to click on the Choose Sprite button. And we'll search for a fish. Which one do you like, Yusra? Mm, I really like the second one in the fishbowl. Yeah, let's go with that. And I'm going to make sure to drag it so that there's equal spacing between the sprites. So since we were talking about costumes last week, I think it would be cool if the fish had another costume. So Nardos, why don't we check if the fish um, has a costume where it's not showing? Yeah, let's look. OK, so I see there's fishbowl A with the fish inside, and there's fishbowl B that does not have the fish. So let's name it so that we can use these. So I'll say fish without for the one that doesn't have the fish. And I'll say fish with for the other one. Why don't we hear the sound of the fish? Can you play it for us? Yeah, so under the sounds tab, we can see that there's a water drop sound. I'm gonna click play. Whoa, that was really cool. Yeah, so let's actually code our fish to make the sound. 
So under the code tab again, we are gonna get an event block. And this time we only want the fish to show up on our purple screen, not the title. So I'm going to drag the when backdrop switches to block and make sure that I select purple. Then, like we talked about earlier, we can use the show block from the look section. And lastly, we can also make sure that our fish is in the bowl. So I'm gonna do a switch costume block and select fish with. So guess what we just did? We actually just followed professional coding habits by going step by step. The goal is for the frog to see the fish after it thinks about how hungry it is. So why don't we test our code? Ribbit, ribbit. So it's great to see that we frequently test our codes because as coders, we should frequently check our code, which is a form of debugging. So it looks like we have our fish on the title page. We need to fix that because we went, we just want the fish to be in the story, not the title page. So one thing to keep in mind is that when we use the show block, we can also use the hide block in order to hide our, um, our sprites. So when, so under events, when the backdrop is on, is on the title page, then we can make sure to hide our sprite. Exactly. So let's see if that works. Ready, ready. Perfect, it looks like everything worked. So after we have done that, why don't we add sound to the fish? So to do so, click on the fish sprite located in the stage yep. and click yep. on costumes. So we're actually going to play the sound. So we can just use the sounds block. Um, I'm going to use the play sound until done block and add it in. And we're going to so, make sure that the sound that we're choosing is water drop. Yep, so let's test our code to see if everything is still running smoothly. Great idea. Ribbit, ribbit. So the water drop plays at the same time the frog is thinking that he is hungry. So that sounds good to me. So now it's time to make the frog eat the fish. We will need the frog to reach out with its tongue and grab the fish and we will need that fish to disappear. So one of the ways that we can do that is using the broadcast block. Wait, so what does this block do? Does anyone know? Why don't you yeah, try- Yeah, please share in the chat. And we'll give you a couple seconds to do that. What does the broadcasting block do? It's even okay to say, I don't know. <laughs> right, I definitely did not know when I first learned Scratch. Neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> so Nardos, Nardis, do you wanna tell us what? Uh, someone said they didn't know and that's totally fine because Nardis yeah. is- <laughs> Oh, someone said they do know. Do you wanna tell us? It sends a message to a other sprite. That's correct. Yes, exactly. So that is sprite to sprite communication. And so right now we can have our frog actually send a message to the fish to disappear. So, so under the frog tab, since the water drop is at the same time that the frog is thinking about his hunger, we want to wait two seconds before he sticks out his tongue and snaps up the food. 
Right, so we're gonna get another weight block. Make it two seconds. Then before we can send the message to eat the frog to eat the fish, then we're gonna switch our costume so that it's frog with the tongue. Right. right. And then we're gonna use the broadcast block under the control tab. So we'll drag it under the switch costume block. Yep, and I'm gonna just scroll down so you can all see my code. Okay, and then we can click on this drop down menu and click new message. And when this pop-up shows up on your screen, we can name the message. So we wanna make sure that it's really clear. I'm gonna say eat fish. I think that's great. Why don't you click OK? And like always, why don't we test our code? Yeah, let's do it. Ribbit, ribbit. <laughs> so the frog's tongue is still out. That means we need to do something about that. We can grab the switch costume block again and say switch to costume for frog without. So let's test that again. Ready, ready. Oh no, now we can't even see the tongue. What can we do, Yustra? What we can do is actually put a weight block. So why don't yeah, we go? Let's do that. Yep, just like that. And I'm and gonna make sure to add it before switching the costume back to the frog without the tongue. And let's see how that works. Yep. Ribbit, ribbit. I think that might still be a little too fast. So I'm gonna say 1.5 seconds again and see how that works. Ready, ready. It's important as coders to check our code frequently, which is one thing we appreciate everyone is doing. Right, and we worked on our frog and we know that it works. So now we can go to the fish. The poor fish, the poor fish. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly, the fish is gonna have to be eaten. So the fish is gonna know when to disappear by using the when I receive block. And we can see that we can select one of the messages. In this case, that's gonna be the eat fish. And then um, we're gonna uh, go back to the frog sprite and add the switch costume just like we did. So it looks like we already have the switch costume under the frog. Um, how about we test our code just to see where we're at? Okay, I think that's a great idea. Ready, ready. So our fish is still there. Um, so the when I receive block is kind of like a part two of the broadcast block. So we want to make sure that there's code underneath it so that the fish can actually disappear. So I'm going to add a switch costume to fish without. And let's see if that works. Ready, ready. Oh my god. <laughs> it keeps surprising me. And it works. So just as a recap, so far we have done the beginning in that the frog was hanging out. And then we did the middle because the frog realized they were hungry and then they ate the fish. So now we have to do the end. So why don't we add the last character of our story, which is the chick. 
So we will now add the sprite, which is located at the bottom of the stage. And just to save time, we will search up Chick and pick the first one. Yeah, and again, I'm going to move the Chick so that there's enough spacing between our sprites. So now we're going to go to the Costumes tab so that we can see if we can change the Chick's costume so that it can open its mouth before it talks. Oh, look, there's three different costumes. Let's go ahead and name them so that we can use them in our code. So this first one, I'm gonna name Close Mouth. And the second, I'm gonna name that Open Mouth. And lastly, even if we don't use it, you all might decide to do that. So let's name the last one Looking Down. So why don't we see if the chick has a sound? So we'll go yeah, to the sound tab. Why don't we play it first? Oh, it looks like there's a chirp sound. Okay, so now we can use that for our code. So before we make the chick do anything, remember that we have to make sure that the frog is the only sprite that appears on the title page. So under the events tab, we will drag the when backdrop switches to block, and we will click the down arrow and choose title. And because we want our chick to go away, we're gonna use the hide block under title. So now let's test our code again. For this, for this. Hmm, so it looks like the chick didn't appear in the purple background, so let's change that. So we know that we want the chick to show up in the purple background, but we also know that the chick can't see the fish being eaten. So <laughs> we're gonna make use of broadcasting again. And so just to recap, broadcasting allows us to send a message from one sprite to the other. Um, and we don't actually have to make another message. We can use the same when I receive eat fish block and then code underneath that. So we want to make sure that um, when I receive eat fish, the chick is showing up. So I'm going to go under looks and grab the show block again. And then we also want to make sure that we wait a little bit, because what if the chick sees the fish being eaten? That would be very scary. So remember to make the um, in order to make the sprites disappear, um, we'll use the hide block. But if you want to make sure that you're changing costumes, we're gonna do the switch costume block. So under the fish, we made sure to when I receive eat fish, switch the costume to the fish without the fish in the bowl. So back to our chick. So let's add the wait block. How long should we wait, Yustra? Um, let's try one second. Okay, let's test out our code. Ready, ready. Oh, oh. Looks like the chick <laughs> caught the frog. So why don't we make it a little longer? Why don't we try two seconds? Let's try two. Ready, ready. Oh, looks like we can even go longer. Um, 
maybe we should try 2.25 and see if that works. Okay. Ready? Ready? <laughs> Why don't we try three seconds? Okay, let's do that. Ready? Ready? Maybe we could just go back to the frog tab and s slow down how long the tongue appears. I think that's a great idea, Nardos. So under the frog tab again, you're gonna click on that sprite and let's change this 1.5 to just one second. Let's see if that works better. Ready, ready. Hmm. Still looks like maybe we can add either four seconds to the chick or 0.5 to the frog. Yeah, so we have different options. How about we try both? I'm going to put 0.5 seconds for the frog, and then I'm going to click back on the chick's workspace and set that to four seconds. That should give us enough time, I think. Ready, ready. I think we're so close. I'm <laughs> gonna try five seconds. Okay. So that a lot of times when we're coding, it's gonna be a lot of trial and error. So remember to be patient. And we also have someone ready, in the chat ready. giving us a recommendation that we should try it for five seconds. Awesome, thank you. Let's see how that goes. Ready, ready. How do you feel about that, Nardos? I think that was close. Um, let's just do six and then move on to our next step. I think that's also a great idea. This chick is a quick chick. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so the chick is going to be looking for Bernie the fish. So we want to make sure that the chick is not looking down, but instead that the chick makes sure to start out with the closed mouth. So we can add the switch costume block and switch to open mouth. I mean, closed mouth, sorry. <laughs> So let's test our code. Ready, ready. How do you feel about that one? I think that's pretty good. We should um, have the chick say, where's Bernie? I agree. So we're gonna use the say block. Wait, but before we do that, we wanna make sure that our chick has the mouth open and we left off with the mouth closed. So I'm gonna add a wait block so that we wait one second with the mouth closed. Then we can make sure to go under looks and grab our switch costume to block and then have the chick open its mouth. Then we can change the hello to say, hello frog, where is Bernie? And I'm also gonna make it last for three seconds so that our audience has enough time to read that. Great idea. So let's test. Ready, ready. That's okay. a really good question. Where did Bernie go? <laughs> exactly. So now we're wrapping up our story. What else can we do? 
Great question. I actually had a brilliant idea and we can add an, the end page just like in a story or in a movie. Yeah, we can definitely do that. Um, since that is our last and final step, how about we actually have the chick play some sound and then we can make our title page. Even better. So under the sound section, you are going to drag the play sound until done block before asking where Bernie is. So let's see if it works. Ready, ready. I think that we can actually rearrange our weight block so that it doesn't take so long. I'm gonna try to wait before I show. So I'm gonna move this weight block before and then add show, then we can switch costume. Why don't we Let's test that? Works. Yeah. Ready, ready. Okay, so now six seconds might be a little too long. <laughs> Yustra, do you have a suggestion for how long we should wait? Um, why don't we try four seconds? So someone was asking, what is the chick saying? And the chick is going to say, hello, frog. Where is Bernie? Yep, exactly. So let's test the code. Ready, ready. Hmm, that might be too long. I'm going to try 2.5 seconds instead. Hopefully, that will work. Ready, ready. What do you think, Isra? I think that was much better than before. Yeah, so just like your idea, let's go ahead and make the end page. So we're going to go under the stage and to backdrops. And we're going to... Go yeah, ahead. go ahead. You can so go, we're actually okay. Gonna, okay, we're actually going to duplicate the slide that we had before, which was our title page. Okay, so since this is not a title page, we can change this text to say the end. There we go, and we can just make it bigger, like so. And we can even change the font. So, um, which one should we pick? Um, why don't we pick that one? Oh, the curly one or the marker? I like the curly one. Let's go with that. Okay. So now we have our end. So, and by the way, guys, everyone, um, as soon as we are done coding, we're actually going to play a Menti game. So look forward to that. Yeah. So let's name the costume to say end title. And then we can go to our code tab. Now we want to make sure that on the end that all our sprites disappear because it's the end screen. So back under the frog, we are going to add an event block and it's going to be the when backdrop switches to. And then we're going to select the end title. And then we also have to make sure that if we're going to use the when backdrop switches block, that we're going to switch the backdrop to the end. 
But actually, since our chick was the one who did it last, let's make sure that our chick is the one who switches the backdrop to the end. And we can get the when I when backdrop switches to block and select end title and hide. You know what would be really easy for all these sprites to disappear for the end page? If we backpack this. You're right. So the backpack is at the bottom of our screen right here, and we can click on it so that we can see it. Let's drag this code into the backpack. Great, so now it's in the backpack and we can click on our other sprites and drag the code out onto the workspace. Oh, and it looks like it came all the way up here. And repeat the same process for the frog. So, should we test our code? Yeah, go ahead. I think what would be really cool is if we added the dun 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 music. Ah, <gasps> you're right, and we can add it after the chick is done talking. So to make sure that we add the sound, we can go to the sounds tab and search for a sound. So why don't we search up done, done, done? Oh well, look, it's right here, let's hear it. There we go. <laughs> Perfect, so back to our code tab, we can use under sounds, the place sound until done block and add it before we switch the backdrop to the end. Okay, so let's test. Ready, ready. Yay, we did it. That was a job. So now that our code is complete, Yes, and so now that our code is complete, we can make sure that it's saved by clicking File and Save Now. Then we can open today's studio link, which we put in the chat for you all. Nardos, so, can you remind everyone how we put our projects into the studio? Yeah, exactly. So I'm gonna actually have to stop sharing so I can pull that one that screen up. And it's loading up. So this is our Scratch Studio for today. So when you get to this screen, you are going to click on the Add Projects button right here. And then once you do that, you can see all your other projects at the bottom. So I'm going to click the one we just made, which should be on the left-hand side. And it says Play Sound Mentors. So now it's part of the studio. Great. So make sure that everyone else also um, adds their projects into the studio and follows the proper file naming protocol so that we can spotlight your project next week. So and how do we play a game? I think that's a great idea. Yeah, so I'm gonna pull up the game information and it would also be posted on the chat for you and show up on the screen. And there's the code, so 67101945. And while the mentee is being loaded up, we just wanted to say congratulations to everyone for doing your code. You guys, all of you guys, everyone here did amazing. And I can't wait to see the projects in the studio. And hopefully you are featured next week. 
Yes, and also remember to ask us questions in the studio or um, have any comments and we'll be sure to get back to you. Exactly. Okay, so how about we start the Menti? Sounds great. All right. I'm excited to see all the emojis enter so, into <laughs> one. Menti. Definitely. So, oh, look, we have so many people in. This is interesting. Oh my God, we have a frog like our story. Oh, how perfect <laughs> is that? Okay, I'm just gonna give a couple more minutes for you all to join, or more like seconds. <laughs> Look, I see a little hat. I see a paper clip. And a caterpillar. Okay, this is all so cool. Oh, okay. we have someone in the comments saying they're the rose. Yeah, definitely share in the comment um, which icon you have for the Menti. Someone is the cake, someone is the snowman, someone's Ooh, the lion. We, oh, someone revealed they're the frog. Oh, yay, that's awesome. <laughs> someone's the ghost, tiger. And I even see a dragon, or at least I think it's a dragon. <laughs> we also have a rabbit, a crab. A leaf, a dinosaur. Okay, so I think we can get started now. So let's see our first question. So remember to answer fast to get more points. So the question is, what is your gender? Yeah, and remember the first two questions will always be um, getting us warmed up and started for the actual quiz. So there's five seconds left. Four, three, two, one, time's up. Wow, oh, we have wow. a really close split. We have 29 yeah. boys, 27 girls. Looks like we got more boys this time. Okay, so let's get the next question. So the question is, what class range are you in? Two to four, five to six, seven to eight, or other? When I was first learning Scratch, I was already in high school, so. Me too. I think Scratch is really fun to learn. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, wow. Looks like we got 20 class two to four. 19 oh. and five to six and 16 and seven, seven to eight. And we have two others. That is cool. Okay, so get ready for the actual quiz. So the countdown will start now. After we see our leaderboard. <laughs> okay, so Ayan is up first. We got some other people. Oh, and look, there's also hi everyone. Awesome. <laughs> Hello. So let's move on. Okay, here we go. You can add sound to Scratch by importing a download file. True or false? So this is kind of tricky because we didn't um, get to do this today or see if this was possible, so. so. Let's see what everyone thinks. A majority is saying true, and that's right. Yeah, awesome job. Okay, so next question. Countdown starting. What is the fastest way that scratchers can duplicate code? Copy and paste the block, use the backpack, right click and duplicate, or drag the code to the sprite on stage. Mm 
Oh, wow. So we have some mixed responses. So although all of these are ways that you can duplicate code, um, the fastest way is definitely using the backpack. So do that in the future. Next question. What does broadcast mode allow you to do in Scratch? Take your best guess. You have direct timing, send the same message to multiple sprites. All of the above, A and C, have a specific block. OK, so for all of you who said, um, since we have a majority of people saying send the same message to multiple sprites, that is true. That is correct. But it does also allow you to direct timing and have a specific block of code run when the message is received. And so that is what we did to make our fish disappear. Exactly. exactly. Our next question is, which numbers can you put in the weight block? 1, 0 0.5, 4.0, A and C, or all of the above? Excellent. So it looks like most of us know that this is all of the above. Next one. Oh, so we can see our leaderboard. You guys are doing great. Yeah, and it looks like it changed up a bit. So um, we have a couple more questions. So try to get your best to get on the leaderboard. Next question is, how do you know which Sprite's workspace you are coding on? So uh, look at the faded picture on the top of the workspace, look at the highlighted Sprite on the stage, A and B, or none of the above. Three seconds. So if you said A and B, that is correct. And um, for all of you who did say the other, um, for A or B, that is also correct, but be mindful that there's two ways that you can check. Um, so make sure that you're looking at the picture on the top of the workspace, but also you can look at the highlighted sprite on the stage. Next one. What do these <laughs> words have in common? They are on a television program sounds from the Scratch library, they are from a radio station, or these words have nothing in common? So we went through sounds today um, from the Scratch library. Okay, the next one. So Which this type? is a from last week, sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. <laughs> Which type of image is related to pixels? Bitmap or vector? Awesome. So it looks like you all know your stuff. Yes. So bitmap images are related to pixels. So now it's time for our final question, which is also a bonus question. So let's see. What computer science field trains machines by learning data to make decisions? So we have software development, website development, artificial intelligence, and cybersecurity. Great, so it looks like most of us know that this is artificial intelligence. It is such an exciting field that you all can go to. And you, um, by being here and taking the Scratch class, um, are definitely getting there. So excellent job, everyone. And we can look at our final leaderboard. Oops. 
Awesome job. Congratulations. Okay. So that is pretty much all that we have for you today. Um, so remember that the coolest projects competition um, is coming up. So all the skills that you're learning in the Scratch class is something that you can apply to make a project and um, make sure that you submit it to this competition. And don't forget to subscribe, like we said before, down below so that you don't miss next week's show. And I actually have a challenge for everyone here. So we want you to recommend Code Tigers to at least 10 of your friends. So please do that and we'll see if, you, if everyone here is able to do so. Yeah, and maybe they can join us next week for games. That would be so exciting. You don't want to miss it. So see you next week. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.